In today's video, we're going to be covering 12 skin conditions which are associated with diabetes. Now, this is an important topic as it's estimated that 30% of patients with diabetes will experience a skin problem at some stage throughout the course of their disease. Now, in this video, there's going to be lots of clinical photographs, but before we get started, please can I request that if you haven't done so already to subscribe to the channel for weekly medical education videos, and remember to like and share the video if you learned something new. Also, please remember that these skin signs aren't necessarily unique to diabetes. There are other conditions which can cause these, and some can just occur in isolation without any clear underlying cause. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video and start off with the first associated skin sign, which is called acanthosis nigricans. Now, I've published a more detailed video on this already on the channel, so please check that out if you haven't done so already by clicking on the link up here. But essentially, the main symptom of acanthosis nigricans are patches of skin that are darker and thicker than usual. Some people describe these as feeling like velvety pieces of skin. They can appear anywhere on the body, but they are most common in the skin folds, so things such as the armpits, the neck, or the groin. And you can see that in these photos on screen. If you notice these skin changes, you should see a doctor. There can be other causes for acanthosis nigricans, such as being overweight, Cushing's disorder, and rarely stomach cancer. But again, your doctor will evaluate this further in relation to your own clinical picture. For more information on acanthosis nigricans, I've also included a link to the NHS website in the description box of this video, so please do check that out as well. Now, the second skin sign to be aware of are diabetic blisters. These are also known as bullosis diabeticorum, or BD, or diabetic bullet. And you can see examples in the following photos. Now, these might pop up suddenly on your fingers, toes, hands, feet, and sometimes on the legs or forearms. They're usually white with no red around them. Now, the blisters might look scary, but they usually don't hurt. And typically, they heal on their own in about three weeks. They could be a sign that you have diabetes or that your blood sugar levels aren't controlled. Again, if you're noticing that these are an issue, you should talk to your doctor or a health provider about your symptoms. That's because if you're a diabetic, you're more likely to be prone to skin infections. Now, the third skin sign is something called granuloma annulare. Doctors aren't sure how this condition is linked to diabetes, but it is. They also don't know exactly what causes these tiny bumps around your ankles, hands, feet, or upper arms and elsewhere, but it may be a response to inflammation. Now, your doctor may try to treat it with creams or injections. However, often you don't need treatment if your symptoms are mild. And again, you're going to see a variety of photos on screen now demonstrating cases of granuloma annulare. Now, the fourth skin sign to be associated with diabetes that you need to be aware of is thickened skin. Again, your doctor might call this by its medical name, which is digital sclerosis. It can happen with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and the skin on the back of your hands or on your fingers or toes may be thick and waxy. Now, those patches may spread to your arms, upper back and shoulders. And in severe cases, you may have trouble moving your joints due to the thickened skin and you might need physical therapy. Now, the best way to treat this thickened skin is to control your blood sugar, i.e. making sure that your underlying diabetes is well controlled. At number five, these are known as shin spots. Again, the medical term, and it always has to be a different medical term, is diabetic dermopathy. Now, these can look like simple age spots, but they're not. So high blood sugar from diabetes typically damages small blood vessels. This is known as microvascular damage and causes these brownish patches to appear. Now, what they typically look like are roundish rough spots and they usually appear on the shins. Now, dermopathy is usually harmless and should fade away in around 18 months or so, but it can also last a long time. Now, moving on to the sixth issue, this is a rare but important complication of diabetes and is something called necrobiosis lipodesia. And this is the sixth skin sign. Now, necrobiosis means degeneration and death. And here, small raised red spots on your skin slowly grow larger and shinier and sometimes turn yellow. Your skin may subsequently thin and split and this causes sores called ulcers. Now this can be very itchy and it can be very painful, but thankfully it's very rare. And it's estimated that only one in 300 people with diabetes ends up developing this. 
Now it's hard to treat, but prescription medicines, injections or lotions may help. And it's really important you see your doctor if you do notice this developing. Now the seventh skin condition to be aware of are eruptive xanthomatosis. Now uncontrolled diabetes can lead to breakouts of these pimply waxy bumps on your hands, feet, arms, and legs, and as well as your buttocks. Now young males with type one diabetes are particularly likely to get these. The skin eruptions may be tender and itchy, but importantly, they're not contagious, i.e. they don't spread to other people. Now, it's important to talk about how to better control your blood sugar levels to prevent these from occurring in the first place, and this should help ease the symptoms of the bumps if you do have them. Now, more generally, diabetics are more prone to infections of the skin. This is both bacterial and fungal infections. So these skin conditions are numbers eight and nine. So we're gonna talk here about infections. And the reason that diabetics are more prone to skin infections is because high blood sugar can dry out your skin, can curb your immune system, and this raises your risk of skin infections, with Staphylococcus being the most common bacterial infection. For example, you might find that you have styes on your eyes, inflamed hair follicles, this is known as folliculitis, or infected nails. Again, you should talk to your doctor if your skin feels swollen, itchy, painful, or hot, especially if you know that you've got high blood sugar or diabetes. Similarly, fungi love to hang out in the moist folds of skin, and that includes your armpits, under the breasts, around the nails, and the corners of the mouth. Now, you may have heard of something called athlete's foot on your feet, or something called jock itch around your genitals, or ringworm on your scalp. Candida albicans is the most common fungus that causes it. Your doctor can help to treat the infection and again tell you if it's a sign of uncontrolled diabetes and they'll do things like checking your blood sugars and taking your HbA1c levels. Now coming in at number 10, we've got xanthelasma. Now xanthelasma happens when your body collects extra cholesterol around your eyes. You might notice flat or slightly raised yellowish growths on or around the eyelid. And you can see examples of this on screen here. Now the deposits aren't harmful or painful, but they could signal uncontrolled diabetes, high cholesterol or other health problems. And often high cholesterol and diabetes fall hand in hand with each other. So moving on now to discuss another really important skin condition to be aware of with diabetes, and that's diabetic foot ulcers. And these have got an annual instance of around two to 6%, and they can affect up to 34% of diabetic patients during their lifetime. So this is a super important problem to be aware of. Now, risk factors for developing a diabetic foot ulcer include things like type two diabetes. So type two diabetics tend to have foot ulcers more commonly than type one a duration of diabetes of at least 10 years, as well as poor diabetic control, being male, and a past history of a diabetic foot ulcer. Now, what do you need to look for? Well, these sores can start with nothing more than a small scrape if you've got diabetes, especially if it continues to rub in tight-fitting shoes. That's in part because of poor circulation that makes it harder for wounds to heal. And diabetes can also cause nerve damage so you can't feel the damaged skin as well so you don't know that the skin is damaged. So it's really important that you or someone else checks your foot for sores every day. And also it's important to ask your doctor or podiatrist how to prevent them. Now it's really important to try and manage these as soon as they're noticed because there's a risk of secondary infection causing cellulitis or a spreading infection to the bone, which is known as osteomyelitis. Now I am going to make a whole separate video on diabetic foot ulcers with a lot more detail in this video, but you just need to make sure that you're aware that foot ulcers are a really important issue to be vigilant about. Now, rounding up with number 12, we have vitiligo. Now this, this is more, now, this is more common if you've got type 1 diabetes, but also people with type 2 can get it. It's not quite clear why vitiligo destroys cells that normally colour your skin with pigment. Now, you might notice a patchy skin of clearly different colour. It usually affects the chest, stomach or belly, as well as the back, but sometimes it can happen on the face as well. Now, vitiligo can be treated with medicated creams, UV light. It's important to use sunscreen to protect the affected skin patches if you do have vitiligo. Now, if you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section. I do tend to reply to all of the comments. It just takes me a little bit of time to go through everything. And remember to hit the subscribe button if you've not done so already. That does bring us to the end of this video where we've covered 12 important possible skin signs associated with diabetes. Now, there are many others, but this was just a brief overview of 12 important ones. For more information on all of these signs, 
please check out the links which I've included in the description box of the video. Once again, thank you very much for watching and until next time, bye. Thank you.